Okay, that fits really good, but I might take an extra couple of cuts just to give that a, a bit of clearance because we don't really know how true this thread's running to the, the mounting bearing here that it sits on. So I'd just rather have a little bit of clearance in it than have it too neat. So I'll just go another couple of um, foul. That's just a general spray um, drilling tapping compound. Okay, so we just got two hundredths of a millimetre to polish off the shaft, and that will give us a good fit in the tailstock body. So make sure you've got a rag down so you don't get the, the grinding, well, the, the shit off the emery paper on your machine. And also disengage the lead screw and feed shaft when you've got a rag down, because from time to time they can get stuck in it and it will just drag the whole cloth off and go around in circles. Not good. Okay, that's pretty good there. I'll just take a bit off the other end. Yes, about 0 0.02, 0 0.025 to come off. Just a fraction more, just on the end. So I'll bring you back when I've got that off and we'll have a trial fit in the tailstock body. Okay, we've got our shaft polished down to size. So we've got a nice slip fit through the bore. So the next stage, we have to machine a key slot, the keyway underneath. Um, I've got a text to mark on here as to the depth that we, or the distance we cut the key. 
Now that's for an anti-rotation screw. So underneath, there'll be a dog point screw goes in. And the tip of the dog point screw will enter the keyway which we're about to cut. So when the tailstock quill is wound in and out on the thread, the quill doesn't rotate. So let's get this set up in the milling machine and cut our key slot. So a simple basic setup, just a piece of tool steel, there's a packer, little V-block, doesn't have to sit in a V-block but I'm just using it as an extra packer. Put our part in, little nip on the vise and a little tap down. Yep, so our packers are fixed, they're not wobbling around, not moving, so we know we're seated. Um, always use, tend to use the hide side of my mallet, or the softer side when I do that. Sometimes if you use the copper side, it will actually bounce and it doesn't always seat properly. So I tend to use the hide side for those sorts of jobs. Plus it's a bit more forgiving on your workpiece too, the, the leather hide. Okay, we'll get a cutter set up and put this key slot in. Okay, there's some funky going, goings on here with this tailstock because I'll just put a, um, a bolt through just to have a bit of an eyeball to have a look before I cut the keyway. And as you can see, it's a bloody mile off centre. So what I'm going to do is still cut our one on centre and we'll just file the end of the dog point screw to suit. I don't want to start cutting our one on the piss because um, it'll look weird. Someone will pull it out one day and go, who the fuck machined that? So I'm going to cut our one on centre and we'll modify the end of this um, screw. We'll turn into a dog point screw to accommodate it. Righto, we'll get this cutter centralised. That looks pretty good. There's no need for us to dick around with edge finders for this thing. Eyeballing it will give us a good result, the result we need anyway. Okay. Get a mill into gear. I'm just checking, verifying that the cutter is on centre here, so we'll go a bit deeper and I'll show you how I do it.
So what I'm looking for, oops, is to make sure we have equal land here and here. Of course, if, if one side's higher here than the other, we know we're off centre, but we're looking pretty good here. So we'll run the cutter through. That's 1300 RPM, it's just a quarter inch carbide cutter. And I'll just lock our table. Some coolant ready. That's where we need to be. So I'll give that some deburring and uh, that's this part completed. So we'll just check our eyeballed keyway. What have we got? 1.365. One point three six three. That's within two thou. That's just by eyeball, so it takes a bit of practice. But if you do it often enough, um, there's no need to waste time with an edge finder on this sort of work. Two thou is within plenty good tolerances for most keyways. A little bit of a deburr. And she's good to go. Now the other thing we needed to address was the uh, this revolving centre they're going to use in this tailstock. It had a hollow end on it so I've machined up a little uh, button for the end of it and I didn't want an interference fit button but, so as to not influence the small end of the taper so it just drops in there and it's just held in with a bit of um, 680 Loctite. So we know we haven't distorted the last part of the taper. So what the button's for, the end of the thread comes up and pushes against the um, button to eject the taper. If I didn't have a button in there, the bore that goes up the inside of this revolving centre is about the same size as the end of the thread 
and what will happen over time it will just munt out and mushroom and it will cause a bit of distortion in the end of the taper and cause damage to the taper bore inside the um, quill. So we've got our center in. Screw it all the way down. And right at the end, I'll do it again. Just before the thread bottoms out, you can feel it goes firm. Hits the end of the centre, so it can be ejected. So that's that problem sorted. The next one we got to address is... As with most tail stocks, a lot of them have this style of quill lock. You can get a split one where the upper and lower clamp together, which is actually a better system, in my view, than this type. Um, this has a locking nut which pulls the slug up, and that recess that's cut there will clamp onto the taper like that. I think this style is um, more likely to cause damage and put marks in the quill than the two-piece split style. So one thing we've got to look at, if I hold that up, let's get this in a bit better light. Okay, so imagine there's our lock. Okay, you see the daylight in between in the middle? So this thing's only going to contact on those two points. So what that's going to do is put gouge marks, severely damage the surface of the quill. So we need to file this down and make that light source, crescent shaped light source in there disappear. Or if anything, just a smidgen um, larger. So you could set this up and go through with a cutter on a uh, on a boring head to to open it up to the correct radius. But in this case, I'm just going to eyeball it and do it with a file. So the other thing we have to address is this thread, honky honky bloody ass thread. It's been severely molested. So we can either run a die nut down that and straighten. Oh, even that's going to make it worse because it's bent. What I might do is chop that off and then tap it out and lock tight a good piece of thread in there which we've harvested from a bolt. So let me see if I've got a bolt lying around that's suitable. So it looks like we're in luck. So I can cut that off flush, drill and tap it to 3.8 UNC and there's an old piece of bolt I can chop off screw into the correct length and we have our thread repaired. Get our tool on centre would help. <coughs>
and our 38 UNC tap. A little bit of cutting oil. I'm just going to pull it through by hand in the tail stock. As it's only a very shallow thread. and finish it with a tap wrench. We'll give that a blowout with an airline. Okay, now we'll go on with the bottoming tap. there. Quick blow out. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll lock tight the stud in here and cut it to length. So we'll clean it out with a bit of primer. A brake cleaner in this case. Apply the green goo, a bit of 680. I think this job's the only time you guys have ever seen me use Loctite. It's not very often I do use it. It, uh, it does have its... The 680 does have some great applications. Make sure we've got plenty on. And we're tight. Okay. So I will we'll measure our required length and then cut this off accordingly.
Okay, so that's what we want. Nice rounded end on it, so there's no sharp edges. We'll go and have a test fit. Okay, so we drop our lock in, quill lock in, line up our keyway with our dog point screw, which we still have to cut to length. Give this a jiggle so she slips in. So all that's required to lock the tailstock into position is just a light nip on that nut and she's locked. That's all it needs. Now, on the rear of it, Fit our screw in. Need two socket head cap screws to retain it when I get the right size Allen key. And get the bastards to start. That one doesn't want to start. There we go. Oh, no. I bet you with this thing, there's only one, one position this hole will line up in. So if we go rotate this half a turn, screws in there nicely, screws in there nicely. Okay, that's good. There's no tight spots in that. Now, that's the reason why I took a second cut at the beginning of this video and took the extra cut of thou off this thread because we don't know how true that thread is to the mounting face on this bearing block here. So if that had given us a tight spot, if we had left a very neat fitting thread, we could have been and for all sorts of grief when we come to assemble it. So there's no considerable noticeable slop in that. Just the bare minimum. So that's a good result. So if we get our centre, let's bring it up a bit. I think you went out of out of camera there. Making sure our tape is clean. Locks in. Bring it round to its eject position. Comes out.
Hello Kay, well thanks for watching and uh, yeah this one's complete, the customer can come and pick it up, he can oil it up, reassemble it, do the final assembly himself. So that's that one out of the way, our next job on the bench is this 110 diameter piece of uh, aluminium bar and what we have to get out of this is a three step A section pulley. So. That'll be the next video. So, right, thanks for watching. Cheers, and hopefully we'll catch you next time.